there is a sin that almost everyone commits without realizing it, and it can have eternal consequences. In this video, discover the dramatic experience of a man who saw hell and received a direct message from Jesus about this sin. Welcome to the channel Daily Faith, a place where we explore profound experiences that go beyond life itself, sharing stories of redemption, hope, and mystery. If you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe and continue this journey with us. Every experience I share with you is an opportunity to grow and find deeper meaning in your life. Now sit back and listen until the end. It will be a special moment to share together. My name is John, and I am 55 years old. I grew up in a devout family, and every day of my life has always been centered on God. My mother taught me to pray every morning and evening, and I have kept that habit. I considered myself a righteous man, a Christian who follows every commandment, and firmly believes in God's mercy and love. I never doubted divine forgiveness, nor truly believed in hell. It seemed inconceivable to me, that a loving God could condemn souls to eternal suffering. The flames of hell to me, were just an image used to scare sinners, not a real place. Over time, this conviction deepened. I wasn't afraid of hell, because I was sure it wasn't real, or didn't concern me. I believed that God, in His infinite goodness, would spare all devout Christians. I could never imagine that this certainty would be shattered. One perfect spring Saturday, I was at a wedding for my childhood friend David. The ceremony was simple but moving, and the reception was beautiful. The tables were arranged under white tents, and guests enjoyed dinner, laughing and chatting. I felt at peace, and couldn't help but thank God for my life. But then came the moment of the wedding cake. David and his wife cut it, and I took a slice, forgetting my severe peanut allergy. I ate a large piece without checking the ingredients. Almost immediately, I felt an itch in my throat, which quickly turned into tightness. Breathing became difficult, and my heart pounded. I didn't want to cause a scene, but soon my legs gave out, and I collapsed into darkness. I no longer felt my body, just absolute emptiness. Suddenly a light appeared. It wasn't an ordinary light. It was alive, warm, and drew me in. As I approached, a figure began to take shape. Its presence was majestic, yet reassuring. John, said the figure in a calm voice, it is time for you to see what you have always denied. The voice resonated inside me, penetrating my spirit. I felt a sudden peace, but also tension, as if judgment was imminent. You never believed in hell, the voice continued. You always thought it was a myth to scare sinners. Now I will show you what you've chosen not to see. In an instant, the light receded, and I saw a horror I could never have imagined. An abyss opened before me, flames towering like mountains from a dark, cracked ground. The air was thick with smoke, and the heat was suffocating. The sky was black, streaked with red lightning. In the flames I saw men and women, engulfed in fire, screaming in agony. Some reached upward as if seeking an escape, but there was no hope in their eyes. Others twisted in suffering beyond comprehension. The most shocking part, was recognizing some of them. They were Christians, people I had known, who had prayed with me, and attended church. I saw pastors, deacons, and faithful Christians, their hands clasped, as if praying, but with no answer. Why are they here? I asked in a trembling voice. And the answer was shocking. We're going to tell you, but before we continue, we have a very important message to you. If you want to be a member of our ministry and help us spread God's message, click on the blue Join button to become a member of this channel. Your support will make a difference in the lives of millions. By contributing, you'll help us create more videos that spread God's message 
and bless countless people. Join our ministry today. God bless you. Because like you, they lived in pride, the figure replied. They prayed but never opened their hearts. They judged others, believing their faith alone would save them. But they ignored the sin lurking in their hearts. They thought forgiveness was automatic. The words struck deep. My prayers and actions now seemed empty. I thought that simply praying and believing guaranteed heaven, but the souls I saw had believed the same, and they were suffering for eternity. I watched those tormented souls, and saw scenes of their lives, visualizing the sins they had committed. Every Christian in that place had lived with the conviction that their sins were minor because their faith would save them. One man, a deacon I respected, was on his knees in flames, hands raised in desperation. He had judged others, never showing compassion or mercy. Another was a woman who attended church every Sunday, but lived a life of hypocrisy. She had harmed others for personal gain, thinking asking for forgiveness would absolve her. The scenes were vivid and raw. Every soul I saw had been Christian. They prayed, read the Bible, attended services, but there was always something missing. It is not enough to recite prayers and attend church, the figure said. Many lived believing that showing faith would grant them salvation. But faith is not just words or outward gestures, it is a daily action of the heart. The voice was compassionate but firm. These people are here because they neglected true repentance and humility. Panic washed over me. If these people had ended up in hell, what chance did I have? I had lived like them, certain my prayers and faith would be enough. I had judged others, ignored my own flaws, and assumed God's forgiveness. The screams of the damned pierced my heart. Their flames did not consume their bodies, but perpetuated their endless suffering. I saw a preacher I had known, one who always spoke of God's love, but he was among the flames, his face frozen in horror. Him too? I whispered. Yes, replied the voice, because despite his good deeds, there was no humility in his heart. He preached love, but lived in judgment, believing he was better than others. The words hit me like a whip. How many times had I silently judged others, believing myself superior because I prayed every day and followed God's law? How many times had I looked at others with contempt? Do you understand now? The figure asked. Hell is not just for declared sinners. Many Christians end up here, not because they didn't believe, but because they never abandoned pride. They thought their faith would save them automatically, without doing the true work of transforming their souls. The words burned inside me, and I realized I had neglected humility. But there is still hope for you, the figure said gently. You are here to learn, not to be condemned. In an instant, the infernal landscape disappeared. I found myself in a hospital bed, weak, but alive. My wife sat beside me, her eyes swollen with tears. I knew I hadn't been brought back just by doctors. God had given me a second chance. My body had returned, but my soul had changed. I had seen hell, and understood how close I had come to eternal damnation. Now, I live every day with new awareness. Every prayer is accompanied by sincere self-reflection. Faith is no longer a certainty but a path requiring constant attention. I know I am not perfect, and my salvation depends on recognizing this truth. It's not enough to believe, pray, or go to church. True faith requires humility and awareness of one's sins. Hell is real, and many Christians have ended up there because they ignored this truth. Pride can lead even Christians to hell. Thank you for making it this far. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment and share your opinions with us. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and share it with those who might find value in this message. Thanks for staying with us until the end of the video. God bless you.
your family and everyone you love. Amen.